thank you, Mr. Chairman. I put this bill in last year. Um, it's a resolution uh, which petitions the Congress to call a convention for the purpose of proposing amendments to the U.S. Constitution to, impo to impose restraints on the federal government, specifically with uh, emphasis on uh, federal spending. Um, uh, I'm happy to put this bill in, uh, but I believe the individuals who will be testifying will testify uh, more in uh, detail, uh, and they'll uh, do a better justice to the, uh, to the explanation than I would. Very good. Any questions for Chairman Corvesi? And how about uh, speaking, yes, Ross Manor, may you? Got a lot of notes, but I promise I will try to be as quick as I possibly can. I'll skip over many of the things unless you have questions on those. And um, <clears throat> so my name is Ross Maher. I'm a resident of North Providence, District 55, and I am the constituent of Representative Corvesi that asked him to sponsor this resolution. And I'm here to advocate in favor of H.R. 7182 and to provide analysis on this subject. But before I go further, I do have to acknowledge that there are some issues with the verbiage. And after consulting with Rep. Corvesi, I believe the term is a sub-A, uh, that we would need to follow that process to adopt the proper language. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that proper language would speak to three general topic areas, and those are to impose fiscal restraints on the federal government, to limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, and to limit the terms of office for federal officials as well as members of Cong Congress. And I, it appears that you all have workstations. I hope that they're internet enabled, and I would recommend if you can to go to the Convention of States website because it'll validate much of what it is that I'm saying here. Um, so under the proper language, 7182 is in fact a resolution for Rhode Island to join a call to hold a Convention of States in accordance with Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. Currently, there are 19 states that have passed resolutions calling for this convention, and they discuss the exact same three topics only. Uh, this legislative season, there are 15 other states besides Rhode Island. New Mexico just filed last week today. Both Iowa and Ohio held their respective committee hearings on the same subject. And um, of the 16 that are active this year, I just want to make a special mention of five of them. And the reason why is because they have double-digit co-sponsors. Um, so those being uh, Illinois, which has 26 co-sponsors, Ohio has 21, Wisconsin, I'm sorry, Washington State has 23. And in the case of North Carolina, they've already passed this resolution through one of their houses. So these are the most likely in this legislative season that I think will make some type of, or my analysis rather, is that uh, those would be the most likely to make some type of progress towards a full passage. So with that, um, anyone who wants to have a meaningful discussion about amending the Constitution in, in any way, shape, or form can only go to one place, and that's Article 5. You're not going to find that language uh, in any other article or in any other amendment. I won't belabor the point of how we get there. I think we're all familiar with two-thirds of Congress or two-thirds of the states when either calls for a convention, then the convention is called to the specific subjects that they've asked for, as they're shown in the, uh, the model legislation. Um, beyond that, I would ask you to just consider for a moment the current 27 amendments that we have all follow the same exact process and ultimately, in the end, had to meet the same ratification standards as every other piece of uh, the Constitution has, that being the uh, three-fourths vote, 38 states in this case, a three-fourths vote uh, in order to ratify. So again, I'm just kind of skipping through a lot of my, my notes for the sake of time. Um, if you were to go to the website, you would notice that there's a tab along the top that says simulations. The reason why I want to highlight this is that uh, Convention of States Action as the organization has twice hosted a simulation, once in 2016, once in 2023. Um, in the instance of 2016, there were 137 legislators that participated in the case of the 2023 simulation, it was 99. Would anyone like to guess which state did not participate in the 2023 simulation? It would be Rhode Island. <laughs> you would be correct. 
and it was uh, actually Representative Matthew Fabish and Mr. William Perry who had attended back in 2016. As well, on that tab for the simulations, you'll be able to get the executive summaries. You'll be able to get all of the proposed amendments that came out of that simulation for you to digest. Uh, there are some rather interesting ones. I would say nothing crazy, but uh, things that definitely place a lot of power, if you will, uh, back where it belongs with the states versus with uh, the federal government. I'm going to skip over um, the examples that I had. Um, I do want to make a point that um, there is another website of, of interest here called the article5library.org. So it's article Roman numeral 5 library.org. They have 450 instances, 450 examples of states passing resolutions calling for a convention to speak about a very wide variety of topics. Um, and, and I won't belabor the point as to what those might be. Um, you could, I'll just ask that you look at them yourself. But there's 450 examples. So this is not a process, if you will, that legislatures in the Congress and just government as a whole is not familiar with. It's been exercised um, quite a bit. So enough on the, uh, the simulations. I just want to make sure I kind of hit all my key points before I move on. So there are generally three major points of opposition that tend to come up, and I'll just state them very quickly. One, there's never been a convention of the states before. So this is indeed a misstatement of facts. Our nation in reality has a very, very long history of states convening to resolve mutual issues dating all the way back to the 1600s. And some of those conventions have been held right here in this city. Um, even today, there is a dispute over the, uh, the Colorado River and water rights that affects seven states. As these states meet to work this issue through, this is a convening of the states. And I think that one can also make an argument that every day that the US Congress is in session is a group of people convening that are delegates from states to discuss issues concerning the country. So arguably, that is a convention of the states. But I digress. Um, so people who say there's never been a convention of states, I would respectfully say that they're misinformed. The next one that comes up a lot is how do we ensure that this convention of states that we're calling for stays limited in its scope? This is a long answer, but I'll give you the very, very short version of it. The resolution itself that I'm asking you to pass stipulates three topics, and that's it. Any commissioner that goes beyond that is in violation of that resolution, period. End of story, there is no confusion, very black and white. With that, Many states have passed what are called faithful delegate resolutions, basically a companion, excuse me, a companion document to go along side by side with that, which stipulates how the commissioners will be chosen, what their scope is, the fact that they can be recalled by their state, and in some cases can be charged with crimes and civil penalties. So these states take this issue very, very seriously, and they want their commissioners to adhere to the scope to which they were approved through their initial resolution. In the case of Rhode Island, I would highly recommend that we also pursue um, a faithful delegate resolution. In my written testimony that I submitted to the clerk, I uh, provided five examples of faithful delegate resolutions. Um, I won't bother to say the names of those. Well, actually, Florida, Utah, Tennessee, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. OK, could you wrap it up soon as we have a lot of people? Yes, ma'am, yeah. I get it. And then the final thing. Uh, the infamous runaway convention, I'll give you the ultimate short answer. It never happened, and there never has been one. And we can discuss that at a later time if you are so inclined. Barring that, I am ready for any of your questions. Any questions from the committee? Nope, hearing none, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, could we have uh, David Wilder? That's Wilder, thank you. Wilder, okay, I wondered about that. And uh, while we're calling up, how about Richard Guerrero? Yeah. Uh, you may begin. Hello and thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Wild from Somerset, Massachusetts. As a volunteer regional captain of the Convention of States Action, I'm here to testify in favor of H-7182. 
Uh, we mentioned today that this resolution is being reviewed not only here, but by committees in Iowa and Ohio. It is currently under consideration in 16 states. 19 have already passed it. Um, last month, I testified in Massachusetts for H3541 in front of the Veterans and Federal Affairs Committee. This has cut across all political labels and is a purely American response to some serious problems at hand. I have some personal observations to share concerning some misunderstandings about the Article 5 process. If you work for a special interest group, it would certainly be easier to lobby a mere 535 in Congress rather than these thousands of legislatures in the state houses of 50 states. So a state convention where the people's voice would prevail over special interests is not their best interests, not in their best interests. These special interests mislabel the Article 5 convention as a, quote, constitutional convention, unquote, and they preach the fear of a, quote, runaway. <clears throat> this conjures images of an all-powerful state convention somehow rewriting the Constitution without your commissioners following their given scope of authority and ignoring the fact that 38 states have to ratify any proposed amendments. This story is more in keeping with the Grimm's fairy tale rather than our established legal process. But you shouldn't really listen to me. I would point you to the conclusions of the Massachusetts Citizens Commission. By ballot referendum in 2018, the citizens of Massachusetts voted to authorize this committee. The most senior elected officials in Massachusetts appointed committee members to look into how to correct election financing. Their conclusion in their 2019 report parallels the concerns in the resolution before you. After a year of testimony and research, they concluded Washington too easily ignores the people and it, supposed, it is supposed to represent. The only way to fix deep-rooted imbalances is through a convention of states. Their report calls for Massachusetts to work with other states to call a convention of states. So you can listen to the Citizens Commission report. Carmine Gentile, the Democrat House representative in Massachusetts from 13th Middlesex, was part of that process. He has a, uh, he's a lawyer and a legislator. He was privy to all the arguments for and against an Article 5 convention. So I encourage you to ask him, listen to him. Better still, listen to your constituents. They trust you to make the decisions for them more than Washington. A large majority are for term limits, fiscal sanity, and conforming to the constitutional balance of powers. A recent poll found 83% of Rhode Islanders wanted congressional term limits. That's probably more popular than Dell's lemonade and clam cakes. But Washington doesn't care. After all, a convention of states is not a revolution. Like this committee, it is simply a commitment to talk about some obvious problems. With that, I thank you and uh, urge your energetic support of H7182, and I'll take any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Okay, thank you. You may. Yes, uh, Richard Guerra. I come from Harrisville, Boroughville, Rhode Island. Um, I'm a retired individual. The two speakers before me have the logistics of what's going on, but I believe in it and have for a long time. I've raised two sons. In Rhode Island, I have grandsons and a granddaughter. We moved from Massachusetts to Rhode Island because I believe, as I did when I signed the papers to join the service in this country, in the Constitution, in the pursuit of happiness. We have 50 states. If you don't like what's going on in one, there's 49 others you can pick from. I believe that you go and birds of a feather flock together. You go where you like and what you like. You don't go and try and change it. <coughs> I'm here in front of this committee to speak to ask you to bring it. As a chain of command, you are who I go to. What happened on January 6th, I don't condone. I don't know how it happened or why it happened, but I understand it. Just like the dust from Oklahoma and the dust ball, Going, bowl, going all the way to Washington before people actually reacted to it. People suffered for it. People are suffering now because of what's happening with our federal government and its oversight. With the long terms where people sit in a seat forever. When you have your president say after he served as a vice president that he never collected a check because he never had to work. Excuse me. Through the chair. If we could just stick with the merits of the bill, please. Okay. Well, the merits of the bill, I agree with. To the bill. I will. 
And that's why I'm here, for term limitations, oversight of federal government, and of federal spending. I'd like to see it controlled, and that's all. And what I'm trying to say is I can only speak from how I feel. I don't have all the statistics. I would like you people to bring it forward. And that's all. You're welcome. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Uh, Greg Guerra. And um, let's see. Can we have Barbara Ladner up? Members of the committee, my name is Greg Garrett. I'm going to testify on three different bills, um, 71 to 82 I'll start with. Then I'll go to 7329, which I don't know if anybody's talked about, and then 7246. So that's the three I'm going to do, and I'm doing in that order. Um, I strongly oppose 7182, and the reason I oppose it is that if you read the bill, it has one section where they talk massively about federal overreach. And that language is taken strictly from fascism. This is, this is language basically to say, we will not protect civil rights, and we will not protect the environment, and we will not protect the right of people to oppose unlawful criminal activity by large corporations. And that is where it comes from. I mean, if you look at the history of this, this Article 5 convention, it is strictly from the right wing telling us that we shall overthrow the right of the federal government to make sure that we have clean air for everybody, that we have environmental justice, that in communities that are being oppressed, that, we, that they will not be able to protect their clean air and clean water that we will not be able to protect civil rights. And um, when you look at the history of the movement that created this bill, and you realize it, is written, it comes out of the South and the racists and the anti-environmental activism that we've had, then I would ask you all to oppose it because the odds of what this con constitutional convention are being asked to do are basically to destroy the public health. I will stop at that one if you've got any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Respectfully, um, regarding the Convention of States bill, which I, I sponsor, I respectfully disagree with what you said because the intention certainly is not to do the things that you said. I realize that you feel that there's some historical perspective to it. However, the, the um, language is... Uh, is very uh, delineates exactly what can be done, what cannot be done. So I just want to reiterate what was already stated in the uh, testimony that was given. But thank you very much. The, the language in the bill is extreme. Any other questions, statements? No. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Barbara. You may proceed. Good evening. Thank you. Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Corvese, for letting me speak here tonight. I'm speaking. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I am here in support of Resolution H7182. As of May 1st, 2023, the U.S. debt was $31 trillion. And I'll let you visualize that. That's the number 31 with 12 zeros after it. This debt is a significant threat to our future and our national security. But rather than being spurred into action after reaching this ominous milestone, congressional lawmakers in Washington continue to exacerbate the problem. As of June 2nd, 2024, they added a couple more trillion dollars. The debt has now surpassed $34 trillion. Congress lacks the political courage to tackle this threat to our country, threat to your children, the threat to your grandchildren, who are now saddled with this nightmarish debt. It will define their lives for years to come. 
which leads us to where we are now, with an out-of-touch Congress with an uncontrollable spending habit. Fortunately, the framers of the Constitution unanimously added a mechanism to allow states to bypass an ineffective Congress and amend the Constitution if the Congress and federal government abuses, abuses or exceeds its power. I believe a $34 trillion debt is an abuse of power by our federal lawmakers. And the mechanism given to us by our framers to rectify Congress congressional abuse is called Article 5, a Convention of States. A Convention of States is one of two methods the, frame, the framers of our Constitution gave us to propose a constitutional amendment. Our Constitution is a compact between states. Our framers, who understood human nature, had the foresight to add checks and balances to our Constitution. Article 5 is one of those checks and balances. It gives states, excuse me, it gives three, if, if three-fourths of the states the ability to propose amendments. If it is only Congress that has the authority to propose amendments to the Constitution, then the partners to the compact, which is us, would be unable to rein in an out-of-control Congress and federal government. An out-of-control Congress is what we have now in a $34 trillion debt. Does anyone really think Congress will ever propose any kind of fiscal restraints and a balanced budget amendment or any other amendment that will restrict its powers? We don't have to ex accept the shackles of the status quo that we have now. It is time to enact Article 5 and call for a convention of states because we, the people need to propose an amendment to enact fiscal restraints to protect future generations from unlimited congressional spending because Congress never wills. I'm asking you to please consider resolution H7182 and add Rhode Island to the states that are proposing a convention of states. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for the witness? No. Thank you.